I always like to see Cane of Samaria. I think it's probably my best one. Or my favorite. Just because you can throw it, you can bop it, you can do everything with it. <laughs> I love how we have a translation error in French. That was oh, awesome really? start. So let's get this race underway. Here we go. And 20 rupees was inside the very first chest. So Faraimi down one to nothing in this series. What does Faraimi need to do in order to uh, even out this series against uh, Christos Owen? Well, I think he's going to have to make some gambles, uh, take a little bit of risk, and hope for the best. Wow, somebody in chat mentioned that they really wanted Fire Rod, and look what we have. We have Fire Rod. Well, we're going to have some barbecue today as we get that, and hey, 300 rupees, that's going to help us out with Gakariko Village. So, the matter of this race here comes down to not this first six minutes, you know? Obviously, if you have a good escape, you're going to have a small amount of lead, but that's going to be inconsequential compared to what's going to happen in the remainder of this race. And I know Christos was saying on his Discord he was hoping for no bomb escape, so he's probably happy with that fire rod. Yeah, having Fire Rod to start out is huge for uh, for, for getting through this area fast. Um, oh my goodness, and they have a sword too, so this is perfect. Nice to have that sword early on. Yeah, that's a lot of good uh, value to start out. Having a sword, having a fire rod. What more can you ask for? All right, so uh, in the first few minutes here, we found ourselves the fire rod, we found ourselves the sword, we found ourselves a bunch of money. Faraimi has some bombs. Crystal's still yet to get some, but we know they're in the prize pool here in Kakariku, or rather in the uh, in the uh, castle. It all comes down to a matter of getting lucky. And Faraimi gets ready to barbecue. Hey, we get some gloves. Oh, wow. You know, the interesting thing about getting the fire rod here is it makes Eastern a little more of an attractive play should we find an early bow, because now that you have the ability to light the torches in that one uh, Igor room. That's if they don't have lamp, you mean? Yeah, that's right. If we don't find the lamp, that would make uh, it more of an attractive uh well, we would call that a sequence break at that point. We don't know what we need to do just yet. The Eastern could still be off the table, could be a pendant for all we know. Crystal's still trying to get that bomb drop. He has not done it, and I did not see what Fryme ended up killing to get those bombs. Ended up what, sorry? I didn't see what Fryme ended up killing to get those bombs. Oh, shoot. Yeah, neither did I. But uh, nonetheless, Faraimi with two bombs, Crystals with none as we head into the sewers. So let's see if Crystals can get lucky and find himself a bomb drop because, well, we do have the gloves. That will make it a little easier, but this is not a trip you want to have to think about returning to anywhere in this run here. And Christos going to kill the ropes, try to get himself a bomb drop, and you notice that he's killing everything, trying to get that bomb drop. Still nothing. 
Yeah, so it looks like chat is confirming for us that the green guards had the bomb drop prize pack. So chances are, unless the rats also have a bomb drop, we might not be seeing um, the back of Sanctuary here for Christos Owen until he gets out and can go um, under the grave. Grimey tortures the rat, takes care of him, and Christos ends up doing that. He went up to the top left corner. So Christos now, he did get some bombs. He did get a four pack. Okay, so we are good with the bombs. You don't have to worry about both of these runners ending up uh, missing out on these uh, last three. And there's Blue Goo for Kakarika Village. There's some more bombs, and there's the Cane of Samaria. Woo! We love the Cane of Samaria. Or at least I do. Yeah, that was the item you said earlier on that you're hoping these guys would have to deal with, but it showed up about sure five minutes late. A little bit late, yeah, but you know what? It's fine. I love it. All right, so for Imy, first to the end of the escape, both of these uh, sporting a sub six exit of the escape, and because we haven't seen the map, well, now we have seen the map. Thank you, Crystals, for confirming that's the map. And we get ourselves the map check. It looks like we do have a red pen, a red crystal up on the Tower of Hera. We also have the red pendant down at Desert. Eastern is indeed a crystal. Absolutely it is. So we definitely, before these runners consider going into Eastern Palace, they might want to wait until they get a bow so they can defeat our most knights. All right, neither of these runners checking to see whether or not Agonim is going to be required. We'll find out a little bit later on. Oh, bomb drops uh, for Grimey, and Crystal's ending up getting uh, the money, and we get 300 more rupees here. So at this point, both of these runners kind of already all set for money this seed. Oh, my goodness, yeah. The value there. I don't know if Christos is going to notice that, that there is actually an 8-bomb drop in one of the the tier poles there for the trees. Yeah, he might come to it a little bit later on, but he doesn't have to worry about bombs at this point. He's got six of them. All right, let's head over to Kakarika Village. A whole bunch of items to find, and there's some more... Bombs there for crystals, so he doesn't need to really worry about that uh, eight drop uh, tree pull. So crystals ended up getting the tree pull for doing the four plus kills without taking a hit. Hey, we find ourselves in mushroom. Which is why Christos' uh, tree pull was different. Hey, the Moon Pearl! We are one item away from Dark World access, feelings. We sure are. Yeah, we can either look for a second glove upgrade or a hammer. Alright, time to leave Fair and let's go on over towards the well. We've got ourselves five items inside. Let's see if the hammer or that Titansmith is one of those two items in there. Well, we that got blue ruby. A, yeah, that instead is a blue rupee. Piece of heart. Oh, a flute, the net, and a yeah. shield. That is Having beautiful the flute for so routing. Early, yes. Because now that is what now these runners can just go ahead and activate the flute right now. And we're gonna have that be played right now, the courtesy of Ferrini, as both of these guys will go ahead and activate the duck. I'll go ahead and check the final spots down here in Kakarika Village. And then because they have the flute that will allow them to go ahead and get an easier access towards the swamp area plus the mini moldorm cave. Yeah, that'll definitely make that routing decision a little bit easier to make, being able to get uh, or to go over to Agonis Cave and Ice Rod Cave. 
I see Frame is trying to do a, a cuckoo clip. Didn't quite get it. Yeah. We get simultaneous five arrow upgrades for both of these runners inside the chicken coop as they make their way. And don't forget, because they ended up getting that bottle earlier, they go ahead and check Sick Kid. Christos needs to buy some more bombs. I guess that's where that eight bomb uh, tree pole will come in handy. And just a single rupee from the Sick Kid. He just gave him his allowance. Oh, poor Sick Kid. Just giving away all his life savings. Absolutely. So, the one thing, though, about the tree pole is, unfortunately, I'm not sure if we actually know what tier each of them was was at when they pulled it, because it's based on, uh, as soon as you've had no damage taken... Ooh, oh, there's a hammer in the library! Boots required. That just brings everything to a whole other level. Wow. And for Aim, he's not going to go ahead and check. We're heading on over and doing this race game. Let's see what the prize is going to be. Is for Aim going to be disappointed? Oh, it's just 20 rupees. Crystal's is going to go flute away. So two is for Aimee. Crystal's is going to hand in the, 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 the mushroom. Yeah, for I mean, you want to go ahead and trade in the mushroom, not give him the uh, witch a bomb. I hear they don't really like that. Just 50 rupees, a little bit of a refund for your bottle. Oh, I would grab it. All right, time to head on over towards the swamp. Fryami's going to go ahead and check. Uh, oh, what there's the, the bow at Desert Ledge. What is going on? Well, now we know we are either one or two items away from access to that bow. Boy, yeah. We either need a book, or we need a second lift upgrade and a mirror. So Watch this is just... Watch again have the book. Mm, no, nope, that was green. But it's just a rupee, yep. Then now we've already found both of our singles. Thank goodness. That was a good... Bomb pick out on Ferrame's side there. He had a 50-50 chance of there being a bomb under there. And there's Mini Muldorm being kind and dropping eight bombs on Christos' side. Yeah, but with so 13 really of them... he really didn't need to buy those. Yeah, with 13 yeah. of them, he's not going to uh, go ahead and do that. There's our Titan Smith. There's our Dark World Access. Yep. Interesting. So now the question is, is where is the mirror that would get us the location of that bow? So Christos is going to flew away. He is heading to six and he will soon see that bow or, well, interesting. Well, he's going to go ahead and check Meyer's shed while he's here. There's our map check right there. Green pendant turns out to be the Palace of Darkness, and the other pendant turns out to be Misery Mire. And that was Bombos, the medallion required to get into uh, Misery Mire if we ever need to do so. These runners are hoping at this point not to. Yeah, probably. With only two items in Misery Mire. It's definitely not a, a place to dip. All right, so with the Titan's Mid that gives us Dark World access, as uh, Christos just uh, showcased, he is going to go check the three over here with Zahashvila, and it looks like Varami is going to go check Ice Rod Cave, a spot that Christos Owens opted not to go ahead and do. Well, I mean, it's the difference between um, one item or three. Absolutely. And that one item not necessarily needed. 
Hearts everywhere. Three items aren't necessarily <laughs> needed. <laughs> All right, so let's swap the position here as Frymy goes and checks the house. For luck, Chris Jones is going to go into the dark and save the old man. Well, luckily he has the sword sparkle to guide his way along. Wouldn't that be something if Eastern Palace has the book or the mirror that would lead you to the bow? So a double dip of Eastern required? I can see the seed doing something like that. So here's what we know at this point. Both runners know that we need the boots to get the hammer. For Raimi, because uh, she ended up checking desert, found out that the information was, hey, silver's at the old man. That's not what Raimi found out. Raimi now knows that the bow, which goes along with those silvers, are on the desert ledge. Whew. I don't think Raimi knows that the silvers are at old man. Oh, for I mean, <laughs> definitely doesn't know that. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure we're on the same page here. Oh yeah, there's the boat. Oh boots. my god! Oh. What the? What is happening? I can't. And the flippers. What? Oh man, I need a second here. Okay, so now we know we need the mirror to get to the boots. That gets you the hammer. What else is the seed chain gonna do to us? Man, I can't keep up with this. We got flippers that Christos is going to be picking up. We need to find this mirror so that he can get the boots. I'm not certain if uh, Niff Boy, who is our tracker for this race, is going to be able to keep up with this. It's just way too fast. I mean, I know we got to go fast, but can we really go this fast? Well... Sometimes these races are meant to be completed super, super fast. Christmas is going to go swimming. Frymy finds out the information that we already know. And I still miss to see what the uh, other... Oh, so it's Ice Palace, according to our tracker, that is the other of the major crystals here. All right, Waterfall and into the chess game. Waterfall has a bottle an empty bottle <laughs> an empty bottle and the chess game has money money everywhere crystals is going to go spend his hard earned rupees bomb upgrade on the ledge that's not needed if we find 20 rupees inside I have the sea house. For Amy, probably going to go duck into Thieves Town real soon. And remember, that was a play that helped lead or helped lead Crystals to victory in game one, wasn't it? It sure was, yeah. Uh, Crystals went all the way through. For Amy went to, like, dipped it, did the first four chests, and then left again. How vanilla. We get 300 rupees inside of the bombable hut, and we only get a piece of heart from Zora. So that's not As expected. Right there. For I mean, not going into Thieves Town just yet. Now, obviously, they both have to go into Thieves Town. It is a crystal to go around. But I think Farami also doesn't want to go get to the uh, go in there because we don't have the hammer just yet. Little does Farami know that a mirror will yield those boots. Ten arrows up there on the uh, Lake Kylie Island. Half magic at the digging game. That's always nice to find. Hobo time for Crystal Owen. Let's see what he has. So let's see, we have a bow on Desert Ledge, boots on Spectacle Rock Ledge, a uh, hammer in the library that requires the boots, and no mirror in sight. Which also does eliminate where the mirror can be, because while it can still be in a really nasty location, it can't be in a lot of different places. like. Most of Swamp Palace is out of the question at this point. 
you can't have it in Turtle Rock at all. And there's certain places in Ice Palace where it can't be either. Yeah, with uh, Hammer being locked right now, Ice Palace, there's a few chests in the very back there that are completely hammer locked, and you cannot defeat Cold Stare as well. Oh, hush up, Chad. I realized my mistake by saying swamp is the second it came out of my lips. You can't go into swamp without the mirror, period. There's a hook shot. Oh. Oh, the hook shot. Wow, okay. So we also have a hype cave going on here. We've got the boomerang, a piece of heart, an arrow upgrade some rupees and some hearts so definitely a one out of ten uh one out of ten hype cave just for the fact that the blue boomerang is uh is pretty fun to to do that as frame lovely uh, shows off his new uh acquirement a yeah, nice uh, hook there for crystal so and using his new uh piece of tool there to get himself around those spikes and let's go ahead can we find that second item here in the uh, Skull Woods. I don't know. We're going to go ahead and see what the uh, breadsmith has in store for us as well. The breadsmith? The dwarf of breadsmiths, whatever you want to call them. This <laughs> game has different text that these guys are known as. Just some love. All right, Crystal is. Uh, it looks like he's intending on going further in here, trying to see if we can't scoop up this second item. It is a beatable dungeon, and this game is giving you a lot of uh, hearts. Look at how many hearts they have at 21 minutes in. Blue rupees, the second item. And Farami is giving us a tune every time they uh, change the scene here, as we've been noticed. <laughs> Just a little bit of swag as he goes. They're playing us a melody. The melody affirms people. Now, unfortunately, this isn't like Zelda 1 where you can play a melody to locate the heart container. Oh, maybe you can. I mean, we found money as uh, playing a melody this seed. Christos is showing off his wonderful execution skills in the Gibdo dance room. And then he ends and up then... getting <laughs> hit by the bunny beam and turns into anything but what well, he was Some kind of careful for fun hearts. bunny thing. I don't know what he turned into. Definitely a bunny. A bunny numpty? I'd have to say so. So, Farami ended up doing the second half first, and is going to go ahead and go back to the uh, first chest later on. And Crystal goes to his potion, which is a good decision. Fighter sword and fire rod. Hadn't found the half magic just yet. Good decision. This is where Farami's going to end up having a little bit of an advantage, only by the sense of that half magic. Yeah, there's definitely going to be an advantage on that side, as you said. And there's the map, so... Christos is going to have to go through the the bottom there where all the... I don't even know. No, he's not. No, he's not. He already got both items. What was the second item? Five rupee was inside the uh, big, che uh, big key chest. Oh, well, that's boring. It definitely is, but we got a whole lot of... That's mountain now. That is exactly where it looks like he may be going as he pulls out his hook shot. And that's a fine fight against the Moth right there for Fryme. So both of these runners won Crystal Apiece. From the same dungeon. I like it when they're from the same dungeon. You don't have to wonder who's really in the lead at that point. But Farami does have to check this chest. And the reason why is they didn't go through the front half. So this very well, as far as they know, could have an item. This is the most annoying chest to go through because, well, you got to backtrack. Especially when, since we know the mirror's not going to be here. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, meanwhile, Christos picks up a cape. Hi, magic cape. Hmm, hello. Now, don't forget, we have not seen what's inside the lumberjack tree. It could be oh, a required no. item for all we know. Oh, my goodness. But we know that it can't be the mirror because we need the mirror to get to the boots. Right. That makes things a little bit less fun. Hi, Ether. There's Ether, though. Hello. I'm not Ether. Then why'd you say hello? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just a bad troll, I guess. I don't know. Christos is trying to do a bomb jump here. Um, can be a little bit tricky to know if you're if you've gone down far enough. And then Numpty has now messed up that bomb <laughs> jump twice. <laughs> At what point does it become not worth it anymore? Uh, I don't uh, know. He's still not there. Oh, he is there. Okay. There we go. Whew. Worried us for a second there, Christos. Oh, Frybe tried to sneak around the hole right there. It got sucked in. And uh, was that? Was oh, that an was ice, that the rod? ice rod? That's that, the ice that was... rod. Oh my goodness. Mirror Ooh, required. This seed really wants that mirror to be required. Good gracious, yes. Man. All right, say so goodbye to Frymy as we go ahead and get the old man. He will end up uh, rewarding Frymy with the silver arrows. Coming up here is Sacristos going through the boring resident sleeper cave here, a spiral cave, and he gets 20 rupees. Where is this mirror? We want to get those boots to make the sea go a little faster. I don't know if I can handle it going any faster, to be honest. Wouldn't that be something if the mirror is in Palace of Darkness? That would be a little bit mean. That would be rude because that would make Aghanim required. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that would be the ultimate just just stab you in the heart kind of scene. there's the mirror oh okay well that was a good attempt but no i got them probably not required at this point uh let's take a look at this medallion coming up we let's take a look at this medallion coming up here for turtle rock uh no and... christo says no well <laughs> let, let's take a look at it in just a moment because okay. we could be just a sword upgrade away from go mode at 28 minutes in. Well, we need bombos for sure, though. No, that's a pendant. Oh, right. That is a pendant. Misery Mire is a pendant. Never mind. But Crystals doesn't know that yet. Because remember, he never saw the bow. I think he... Oh, no, he didn't because no, he, he went didn't. straight into dark... Dark uh, Swamp. That's right. Or whatever. Mire. Dark Mire. Mire Shed. Yeah. That could really play into how uh, Christos does routing decisions. Yeah. Um, for, for Aim might have a bit of a lead on, on routing because he knows where everything and is. And Christos is not checking... Wow, Christos is not checking to see what Turtle Rock requires at this point. This is interesting. Definitely interesting. But he's going to go get the boots. We know that the boots are going to be the reward for part of this chain. And now... He's going to go into the Tower of Hera, which is understandable. 
I'm just surprised he did not take a look at that medallion because with that ether in there, that does give us a one third chance that we are a sword upgrade away from go mode. Luckily, Christos found the big key right away. Did uh, he check the back chest? Not yet. He's probably going to do that if he doesn't get both items off the uh, mold worm area. Okay. That's a smart way of doing things. I like it. So, uh, Farami now knows about the ice rod. Yep. And Christos has picked up his ice rod. Yes, he did. He did end up going to the uh, light world to pick that up there. So, Nip Boy will go ahead and let, mark that on the tracker in just a second. As Farami goes through the Resident Sleeper Cave, 50 rupees, one of the first two items here. And there's the key. You never want to see the key. Oh dear. No, you don't. You do not want to see that key, so you don't have to worry about doing tile room. Because that's a good uh, three minutes right there. So because Frame has all the knowledge of where items are, I imagine that he is going to definitely check Turtle Rock to see what medallion yeah. is required. Yeah. He's got different information than Christos does. So Christos's choices are right based on the knowledge he has. For sure. Yeah, good Moldorm fight so far. Unfortunately, Ooh, having... Almost got, yeah. <laughs> almost got pulled off the ledge there trying to get hit number six, but all is well. And, and single arrow, single so that's arrow. the second item. So that decision to skip oh. that back chest of the first floor pays off in Christos's favor. Yeah, that's a really, really good uh, way of routing Tower of Hera. I love it. Your pick just, up there for Frimey. That just definitely shows off the skill and um, execution um, okay. of both of them, yeah. Here's some important information at this point. Frimey, check Turtle Rock for us. <laughs> Please. Come on. Okay, well, let's go ahead and delay this even more as Crystals picks up his hammer. I think the suspense is just kind of killing us a little bit here. And even if it is Ether, don't forget these runners cannot be declared in go mode because Farami still needs, like Crystals, to find where there is a sword. And now Crystals finds the bow. <laughs> And he goes and throws the sword at it. <laughs> so I think that was a, you know, why didn't I actually check to see what medallion was required to get me into TR? Yeah, that was definitely one of those slashes to say, oh, darn. Okay, so now Christo's picking that up. He's gonna flute to one. Oh no, he's gonna flute to three. I didn't see him change the scroll. Okay. Okay, well, he's, when he's we got. Keep moving on. Oh my god, and we oh got my god. Ether for Turtle Ether. Rock! We are in. No mode? Not go mode yet. No, but we're in no mode. And... Aren't we? Well, not yet. No, and I'll tell you why. Sword. We oh, still need sword. one more sword upgrade. I'm calling it now, the sword is in Ganon's tower. We're in sword mode now. Oh, wow. We are 33 minutes into this seed. What is even happening? Oh, well, Frame, you just picked up the boots. That's exactly what's happening. Say hello to the jet seed. There's, There's the lamp. There's our lamp. Are you joking me right now? I'm trying not to. And now Farami's gonna go pick up the bow. Required right. a big key right there, and there's the bow pickup for Frymy. And a piece of heart. Now remember, Crystals does not know any information regarding the location or the medallion, rather, to require to get into Turtle Rock. Never checked it on his way in. So if Farami gets a sword, Farami is in go mode, 
and needs the win to even this series and force a must-win game three. Winner takes all tomorrow night at 5.30. That would be absolutely breathtakingly wild. Exactly what you want to see in a rando tournament. We find ourselves the map. Haven't you always wanted to find a map of a dungeon? Yes. Don't lie to me. No. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, now that we're on the same page here... Of the map? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's called an atlas. Oh boy, so Christos hasn't really found anything exciting in the back of Thieves Town. I think there's still one more item missing, if I'm counting things right. Uh, Frame, meanwhile, still is also looking for some things in pod. Well, Eastern, but we just found our first item that's three bombs. So, let's bonk in. We'll go ahead and check what the big chest is. That is a compass. Now, Frame now has the scenario here. We could skip that chest. Now, if there's a sword in there, who knows? But, we're gonna make that gamble at this point, given the fact that we're only a sword away from go mode. Oh, wow. We just found a map. Yep, yeah, so, Blind is holding on to something. It's gonna make uh, Christos really work for whatever it is. Hopefully, it's something good. I don't think this is a fight to be worried about at six hearts remaining. And plus, we have the magic cape if we absolutely need it. And for Amy's having some issues with the red eye gore here. Yes. I think that first uh, arrow was a rage uh, arrow. All right. Silver arrows against the Armos Knights. Let's see what we get. Both are probably finishing these dungeons about the same time. There's Short a sword! Break for Varami, 37 minutes and 13 seconds! Varami is in! Go. No, he's not in go mode. Yeah, he is he's in, in go he's mode. In, he's found everything. He's in no he needs mode. to get the hammer, though. He knows where the hammer is, though. Get that hammer and that sweep this done this game up. Oh my goodness. What is this? So 37 minutes in, we are on a jet seed path. Let's now, finish Farami this is gonna in go, an hour. <laughs> yep, Farami's heading to Thieves Town. Now we're gonna route this in, take care of Thieves Town, then head over and take care of the hammer that we need to get out of the library. But you know, when you know where an item is, you can pretty much consider yourself in go mode. It's like finding an item that's required on the pedestal. And Christos is heading to Palace of Darkness Eastern. He's gonna do Eastern first. That's the crystal dungeon. What a seed, Belinx. Oh, what a seed indeed. Oh my god, Crystals is going... Uh, no, he just remembered, he heard the music. He hears the music. This is part of the reason why they've coded it ever since uh, version 8. To have the dungeon represent whether or not it's a crystal or a pendant. He heard the music... Backed out of there immediately. But he's going to get his Master Sword real soon. And then the question is, does he book it up to Turtle Rock to see if that is Ether? Because that could make a big difference in how he routes the remaining portion of this game. 
Yeah, definitely. It's going to make uh, an interesting choice for him on his part, whether he does book it all the way up, or if he starts completing what he can. But I mean, if he can go through Ice Palace in, in Go Mode, that makes a huge difference in routing. So it looks like both of our runners are currently doing the same thing that each of them already did. And if you notice, Christos is going slightly faster than you would expect, because he used a hookshot dash. Fun little swag strat that you can do when the timing is right. So here we are again. We have uh, Ferrame at blind and Christos at Armos Knights. Christos is going to pick up this second sword. He's going to know. Yeah, how there's close the he is. sword. Yeah, there's the sword for Christos. So again, I almost want to bet at this point he is wondering if he needs to investigate about what turtle rock is he may do an early turtle rock for all we know just to find out if it's the ether because that would be a big indication if he flew to one that's exactly where he's going that'd be so interesting for him to do but um, that's not where he's going he is so what are we going to end up doing down does he end up going in playing the second turtle rock to see whether or not it is going to be ether later on that could make a difference now here comes for amy to pick up the hammer now officially we've already marked for amy as in go mode but at 42:17, now it's official with the acquisition of the hammer that well they have everything they need to beat the game yeah so we'll know shortly um, on Christos's side, if he's uh, gonna try and do these um, dungeons in go mode, or if he is gonna open up extra chests just in case he needs that medallion. Now, Faramy has an interesting routing coming up here. Now, Faramy never did Tower of Hera. They can back, they can double that up with the uh, Ganon's Tower, which is a nice thing to be able to do when it happens. It's rare that you can, but so nice to do and yeah, that's that routing. something here so crystals actually does have a little bit of alita for amy if crystals plays this full out go mode and it looks like he's skipping chests so okay he's assuming he's in go mode at this point very interesting This is an unbelievable run here. And, you know, I've had a couple of jet seeds that I've had to check the opportunity to do commentary on. This feels surreal. It really has been surreal. I, I don't even know if I'm in real life right now, to be honest. Yeah, he's definitely just going, go moding this dungeon. No, he's not. Oh, okay, never mind. Hmm. Well, well, I guess we'll go ahead and see how this goes. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to find out um, how much time Christos ends up lo losing just checking some of these extra chests here and there as he goes. So he's definitely not going to go left side. Or I can't imagine him going left side. 
But he yeah. might, yeah, he might go down, um... Uh, to the extra back, room, yeah. Yeah, into the extra room here in Swamp for those two chests. And here's the thing is, right now, Christos, we we mentioned this before, Christos has a little bit of a lead over Frymie because Frymie ended up doing the trading sequence, and now that the routes have kind of converged, we can see that Christos is some rooms ahead. Now he's going to go check down here. Wouldn't this be something if he gets both of the other medallions in this dungeon? That would be hysterical, actually. That would be guaranteed go mode for Christos. Guaranteed, absolutely. He's having a bit of a hard time finding that chest there. There he goes. Just yeah, a he was getting big bodied. Red. He was getting bodied right there, which made it hard. And Farami's gonna check here, and this washes out Crystal's having to check it to try to find medallions. And Farami's doing this for one reason. Tempered sword. Yeah. Having tempered sword on Ganon makes gigantic uh, differences in how fast you can complete them, so. Not just Ganon, Huge. but also Cold Stair coming up. Oh, yeah. Cold Stair is brutal with uh, Master Sword. And even on a smaller choke in this Argus fight right here, because you got a double slash. Yeah, you either have to double slash or uh, pull out the hammer to do kind of a slow uh, strat there. Okay, so it looks like Ferrami oh, is using a very nice interesting start. strat. Oh, Look wow. at this go! That's a really awesome looking strategy. I love it. Yeah, it was. It actually was going pretty fast until we kind of had a couple of misses here. Uh, Crystal's ending up getting the blue mail off of Argus. Will he check the left two side? I don't think so at this point. Oh, nice for Ferrami! Spin and three fire rod shots done and killed. What a f kill! Wow, that is amazing. Just picked up blue, um, blue mail as well. So that'll definitely make hugs from Cold Stare and from Ganon a lot easier to handle. Both of these runners showing off their execution power right here. And Crystal's taking a different route than Framie is, but they both are destined to head into Ice Palace. And if Crystal's does not treat this in go mode, this could be a very interesting development here, but I don't see him going all the way to the right hand side of this dungeon. Oh, it's hard to say. We'll find out shortly. So he is going to kill this room here. This is a convenient chest, but we know that Frymie... Well, Frymie might check this. Ended up checking the back, too. And we get ourselves a key. Oh, goodness. I could... That's having that key... On the right side. <laughs> yeah. Frame me my app not to go ahead and do so. And the reason why Ferrami ends up doing this is because Tempered Sword is a whole lot better than having Master Sword. Now, obviously, if they had Tempered Sword, now Ferrami's skipping it. Ferrami's all in here. We'll probably end up checking the Freezor room because that's an easy kill. Welcome to Brackets, B Links. Oh, thank you. It's been a wild ride so far. Nice palace bomb jump. Clean here for Christos. Same with this uh, Selfos kill. One bomb, two Selfoses, easy as pie. Yeah, we're gonna double bomb these uh, Pentagators. There we go, tackle gone, bye. Crystals may turn right. Nope, no, he turns not. left. For Amy ends up tackling the bomb jump pretty well as well. Chest has 20 rupees. That is item number one here of Ice Palace. And 
this pretty much answers the question. Crystal Zolan is going straight to Cold Stair at this point. But he needs to get some magic before he does so. And I remember, he never got half magic. Half magic was at the digging game. And Ferrami is going to go ahead and kill these. Quick uh, kill. There we go. Let's see how cold stare is. Both of these runners going in at almost the same time. Once again, the magic could be a difference here for Ferrami, being able to do some extra fire rod shots. Get him into the corner. Crystal ends up uh, getting some hammer hits on him. That blue mail that they end up getting a few moments ago is going to definitely help out. Don't forget, Crystal ended up using his blue goo earlier. And wow. so we got hammer strats completed. And Cold Stare got hammered. For a map. And oh, Framie's done with the puffs as well. Good fight for both of these runners. Yeah, they're both neck and neck here. Other than, of course, uh, Christos has um, Tower of Hera finished as well. Yep. Oh, so yeah, how crystals treats things as we go up to the we are heading to Turtle Rock at 51 minutes in as our final crystal. And now crystals for him. This is a one in three gamble. He does not know that he has what he needs to get into Turtle Rock. For all he knows, it could be one of the other two medallions. But he's got to find out this information right now. He's probably really nervous to find out I know. if he's right. He is probably sweating at this point. Why didn't I check this earlier? Yeah, I'm sure as soon as he saw that bow, uh, he realized he should have checked Turtle Rock. And let's see what Christos finds out. And there's Christos getting the confirmation that it is Ether. And there's the sword slashes. <laughs> 52 12 Christos is in go mode. So, if execution is on point for the two of them, let's see. Christos is entering Turtle Rock at 52.29. We will see Firearms in a second. Fryme and up uh, going in here at 52.43. But don't forget, Fryme ends up having to make a pit stop on the way to the Ganon's Tower to pick up Crystal number seven via the Tower yeah. of Hera. Yeah, so we're looking at probably a two and a half to three minute lead uh, for Christos Owen right now. This is a jet seed. This is the pure definition of a jet seed. There's a key and another key. We've seen two keys and a map, and Christos is not going to go ahead and deal with that roller room once again. We're down to four and a half hours. I can totally understand that. There's the two keys for Ferrami as uh, Ferrami ends up running through here. Used up the magic here because with half magic made it a little bit easier. That's going to be come into play too, is the whole half magic thing.
And I know Chat is stating about the whole fact that Faramy does have to dip into the Tower of Hera. Anything can happen at this point. Now, Crystals, does he have that fairy? He did go up to the, uh... Wait, does he have a fairy in a bottle? Which one? Does Crystals have a, a fairy in a bottle? Hmm, I think so. Both of them would. I, think both I believe so. Up. So I think he's going to be perfectly fine at this point. I I was just concerned about the heart and a half because if he takes a death, that would give for Amy a little bit of a time to maneuver here. But we'll see how this goes. Like this race is not done, and Christos. Oh, this is interesting. He's skipping big chest. This just got a little more interesting because of whether or not there's a key in that big chest. But Ferami is doing the same thing. Yeah, so it keeps them both on the same page at least, which is good for us as watchers. Well, we've got four chests coming up inside of the laser bridge. There's got to be a key to one of those four, otherwise these two are going to feel like they're behind. Yeah, and they're both at very low health at this point as well. Yeah, the big advantage here for Faramy, once again, is the half magic, which will come into play coming up in the laser bridge room. But either way, both of these runners still do have to be careful. Okay, there's the compass inside chest number one. In chest number two, we get three bombs. Chest number three, we get the key. There we go. That was definitely a good gamble. They've been making some smart gambles, I have to say. And for him, he gets that key as well. So Crystal Owen. Oh, five rupees just in that last chest. So Crystal Owen's going to be likely the first one to go into Ganon's tower. Again, keep an eye on his health. Keep an eye on his magic for this upcoming fight. He's going to use hammer strats on this uh, Trinex fight. That's guarantee at this point. Christos is using hammer strats. Well, Frame, how are you gonna play this? Also using hammer, hammer strats. Strat. Yep, and they're both doing it backside here with the hammer here. Uh, good decision. Crystal's gonna have to be careful. The head coming back uses uh, safety here. Both of them get ice on the floor. Christos ends up dealing with the ice rod head here. Going Master Sword just to try to make things a little easier for himself. Tackles that pretty well. Framey down to two hearts. Does not have the fairy, so may want to opt to go ahead and use that uh, blue potion at some point. You have to be careful because once that head explodes, you can't switch on over. Ends up tackling that here. And Crystal Owen done with the Trinex fight. And hard to believe that we're starting this game at 58 minutes and change here, uh, B Links, but it's time to play a game. What is this game? All right, we're going to go ahead and guess where the big key is going to be inside Ganon's Tower. There are 22 locations where it can be. Pick a number, 1 through 22. That represents where you believe the big key is going to be. And always is going to depend on the first person to go into Ganon's Tower, which will be Crystal Zoan in the event that Ferami ends up going in there and goes right-hand side versus Crystal's going left-hand side when Ferami gets some of the Tower of Hera. Where do you think it's going to be? I would like to see it somewhere on the right side. What about you? I'm going to guess chest number 18. So one of the last chests they pick up. Well, if this is going to be a jet seed, let's just make it a jet seed. I'd like yeah. to see it in chest number four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, let's see it be in chest number one, for all we know. Here we go. We got a piece of heart. And there's not, and there is not. 
All right, well, there's two. And small key up on the torch, so Christos will say bye, Bob, and go ahead and pick up that key. Rip to Bob. Well, we knew him when. So if I'm going up here, and again, this is going to come out to probably about a two-minute difference by the time Framie is done. The only difference Frame is going to have the hammer against this uh, Moldorm fight, whereas Chris decided to do a fighter sword. Chest number six has a 20 rupee, and chest number seven has a piece of heart. So we continue on our path. Chest eight coming up. Framey giving Crystals a couple of extra seconds by falling down to the fourth floor. That's probably not exactly what was that on purpose? Do at this point. No, no, that definitely isn't. Trying to just set up the fast uh, run here. <laughs> Map turned out to be in chest eight. All right. And we see Christos is going to continue through left side. Yep. At this point, you pretty much have to at this uh, stage. And plus, it gives him maybe better odds of finding the uh, tempered sword. Because that could come into play as well as Frame ends up uh, dealing with this uh, Moldorm. Moldorm is down. So now this gets interesting. If yes. Frame follows Christos exactly, then yeah, Christos Owen has a pretty good lead. And Christos Owen's combat is something that you don't want to have to go toe to toe against. Yes. However, if it turns out that we do have a big key on right side, we still have Ferrami having a bit of a chance here. And it looks like we might have to go to the right side here. Well, we'll go ahead and see. We've gone through 13 chests. No big key just yet. Red mail there for Crystal Zoan. And Ferrami now entering. And the only way that Ferrami's doing right side is if he does Dark Magician Realm. All right, Framie gets in here. And once again, we're keeping with Crystal Owens on the uh, chest game here. Uh, chest number 14 coming up next. So inside chest number 14, will we see the big key there? No, that's just a piece of heart. Get your bow out. And let's go ahead and fight ourselves some ice armos. Inside chest number 15, we find bomb 16. There's the big key in chest number 16. So if you guess chest number 16, you are going to be our winner today. Excellent work. So Christos, we see, is going up the gauntlet. And uh, Frame is going to go through the rest of this area here until he gets to Armos, Ice Armos. M-0 was the person who ended up getting the closest or guessing the exact number. Congratulations from us here at Speed Gaming. So Chris is Owen now heading upstairs. Four and a half hearts, so he's going to have to be a little careful of his health. Once again, he does have a fairy in a bottle, but he did use his blue potion earlier at uh, Skull Woods. He wanted to make sure that he had enough magic for uh, Mothula. Yeah, because he was dealing with Fighter Sword Mothula at that point. That was not a fun fight. Ooh, a fairy drop. That was very beneficial fairy, fairy drop. Chris is riding the merry-go-round with the staff false. Doesn't really like that staff false uh, merry-go-round. This is not a carnival ride I would recommend taking your kids on. Definitely keep your kids at home. Well, just remember to keep your hands, uh, your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times.
It's going to be really interesting thinking at one hour, four minutes and 30 seconds, you're on a tear through this seed and you might not be in the lead. That is true, absolutely. But that's the way the seed had actually worked out. You didn't have to dive into any pendant dungeons whatsoever. You were able to see everything that you needed. You, you couldn't necessarily access it, but the bow was you, visible. You knew where it was. Yep. Boots were visible. Ice rod was visible. It was just really bizarre. Frame just picked up his master key, big key. Yeah, a couple of minutes behind crystals, and again, half magic is pretty much the advantage that Frame has at this point. Whether or not it's enough to be a win here, we don't know. Now, crystals does have to switch over to the lamp just a little bit here. I oh. uh, doesn't have enough, but that's just a minor inconvenience at this point. Oh, sword! 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 What was that? What did he just find? He found the tempered sword! That was amazing. Well, that makes a little less trivial of the uh, half magic versus magic scenario here as Crystals gets bopped down by Moldorm 2. Nice try. Was Crystal actually thinking about hovering? There is a possibility. Well, I think he may. Oh no, I think I know exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to do a swing. He was trying to do a swing. He wasn't trying to hover, he was swinging. And 20 rupees inside the uh, Moldorm 2 chest. How vanilla. I don't know if that is vanilla. Isn't it one arrow? No, one arrow is inside the Palace of Darkness in the vanilla game. Oh, okay. All right, Geometry time with the Aghanim 2. And for him, he does have to be a little careful. Wants that fairy. Gets that fairy. Good job. Yeah. One and two. Crystal's here, continuing on with this Saga fight. There it is. Saga 2 is done. So, uh, 1 hour, 7 minutes, and 36 seconds. Crystal Owen, a Ganon fight away from advancing to the round of 8. And for me here in the 5th floor of the tower. I can tell you exactly what happened to Ferami in this run. It was the digging game and the stuff with the uh, with the swordsmith there. Oh yeah, that is All... exactly where that time would be. Exactly, because he ended up going down to Hype Cave. Crystals never checked Hype Cave. He never checked the digging game. He never checked the breadsmith. And that right there was enough of a difference. Now, Crystals ended up checking Zora, but that's four quick items within a short uh, period of time. And there's uh, Ferrami picking up the uh, Tempered Sword, going to be feeling really good about that. Crystals down to three hearts. Still does have the does drats against this Ganon. Oh, if Ganon cooperates, we can see a sub-110 here from Christos. He definitely found those uh, mount those arrows here on Death Mountain. There's one of them right there. Pulls out his fire rod. Three hearts left. Moldorm 2 claims another victim. Christos oh, Owens, man. there's two and there's three. three. And four got the triple, so Christos Owen is moving on to the round of eight. That is awesome. Good for him. And it was, as you said... Uh, below 110. Good game. Christos is going to be battling out in the round of eight with Kyong 92. 
Get your GGs in the chat for Crystal's Owen, the winner of this best of three series against Faramey. Two games to none. And Faramey, you know, this is a case where you had to be feeling pretty good about yourself coming into Ganon's Tower and being here against Daga 2 in an hour nine, but. It was definitely close. And it really came down to Christos kept with it here. He went to Turtle Rock before doing anything else, before uh, uh, setting foot, like doing any overworld stuff. He wanted to make sure that was Ether that was going to be needed for Turtle Rock. And for Amy, about to go up against uh, the Ganon fight. And with that sound, we had the winner of this best of three series, Christos Owen. Congratulations and GG. Congratulations. Hey, thanks, guys. Okay, well, what a we're going to go ahead and ask you <laughs> one question real fast before Framey finishes off this uh, fight against Ganon. Why didn't you check Turtle Rock your first time up there? <laughs> uh, I had a pretty bad mistake. I mistook Pod as a crystal and Turtle Rock as a pendant. Um, so oh! I didn't think that it was required. Um, so when I went into Pod and heard the music, I was like, oh, uh -oh like this isn't good. And then I was I... like, I was like, okay, so it must be Turtle Rock because I was sure of what I saw on the map for the others. Yeah, um, we were definitely wondering that. <laughs> So I was so nervous for a lot of that, and I was doing some weird kind of partial clears of dungeons, just trying to hedge my bets, and I was so relieved when I saw it now, either. Aren't you glad you devs made it so that Pendant Dungeons play Pendant music? Yeah, that's one of the better ideas <laughs> that's gone into <laughs> around it. Um, but yeah, like, I was really confused exiting pod. I was like, well, I'm just going to do Eastern while I like think what's going on here. Um, so I did like kind of a weird partial clear of Eastern, a weird partial clear of Swamp and Ice. And then was just like, I knew that if it wasn't Aether, um, like I'd skip too much already because I thought all I needed was a sword. And I figured I would find that either in GT or on my path. We're just going to interrupt that for a real fast. If Rami, during the entire discussion of that, has finished off this fight. Throws up the Samaria block and punts it into the room, goes in <laughs> after it, and we are done with this match. For Amy, get your GGs in an hour 12, 22, and a losing effort. Yeah, Almost three minutes. It just kept on giving. Yeah, we could barely keep up. Yeah, Me how too. about that <laughs> well, Yeah, when I found Mirror, I was like, okay, I can go get boots. And then that means I can go get Hammer, and I can get Ice Rod. I was like, what do I even do first? I was like, what's my next move? So I was like, well, let's do Hammer. It's required. I'm here. Um, but like, so much just opened up in quick succession. But at that point in time, all we were looking for is a sword pair for go mode. Frame ended up not doing good into the library to get the Hammer until after doing Thieves Town, but already knew that the Hammer was going to be there. So we knew once the Armos Knights for them dropped the master sword that's it we have a 37 minute go mode that's that's gotta be at least one of the fastest i felt i, I felt like it was so quick as well early on i was like Man, i'm finding pretty much everything i need the icing on the cake is when i was like i'll just go and see what's it desert and it was the bow i was like oh my god everything is just in a spot which i can't access right now but i'm getting verification of where it all is yeah, it was interesting that you didn't check that before going into the Dark World. And we thought that that bow was going to end up sending you in a few different locations before you decided to check that ledge. And the other thing we thought was that you were going to be hunting down a whole bunch of other chests, especially after that early key in Ice Palace, looking for a second medallion. Well, but then I think maybe we realized then, since you said that you thought Turtle Rock was a medallion, so you, or sorry, a pendant, so then you necessarily weren't looking for any more medallions, is that correct? Uh, no, not when I was in ice. Like, I realized after I exited pod, um, but I didn't, like, that Turtle Rock was required, but I didn't start thinking, oh, wait, I might not have the medallion for a, a little while after that. So when I was in ice and when I was in swamp, I knew that I may need a medallion. 
which is why I did partial clears of them. Um, in ice, because I was going to check the uh, the double ice dude room, the uh, the freeze double freeze room, I knew I wouldn't have enough magic for cold stir, so I needed to save that key to get magic from the room to the right in the basement. So I couldn't go right with that key because I didn't have bomb base or half magic or a potion. So that's why I did that in ice, and then yeah, that's one by just check the quick stuff, hedging my bets. And if it wasn't Ether, then I was, you know, it was game over for me. And you said, why didn't I check Desert earlier before going to the Dark World? Because I might have found the mirror um, in my shed, in which case I could have just gotten the item immediately and saved a little bit of time. But that didn't work yeah. out. At that point, we had no idea what that mirror was, but we knew the mirror was starting to grow in value. It definitely was. Yeah, it was weird. Everything was mirror locked. Um, <laughs> my early flippers led to nothing, and I was a bit disappointed with that because um, that was like a, a couple minutes wasted, basically checking yes. the main and hobo. And then when I went to Dark World and immediately found Hookshot in Skull Woods, I was like, "Well, that's really annoying." Because I figured that Skull Woods would be the obvious play that that um, Fury probably made given that we had Dark World access and the a Fire World and a Sword. only difference in your routes is that Ferami ended up doing the digging game, which had half magic. The Breadsmith, which ended up having just a hard container and went to Hype Cave, which was its usual value of 1 out of 10. But other than that, both of you had almost the same exact route. The only exchange was that versus your Zora, and Zora was a faster check for you. Yeah, it was. So I'm not like too upset, but it still f felt like wasted time early on because, you know, you just assume that the your opponent plays per like perfectly or routes better. So the fact that I had gone up to Death Mountain and then done all the flipper stuff before just going like flew into three, going to Skull Woods, finding the hook, I assumed that was what Furane would have done. So I felt like I'd lost like a good three to five minutes just from doing all that. When you watch this VOD back, you're going to pretty much notice that you two did go off in a little bit of a different direction, but you never fully really diverged that much, with the exception of you dipping into Hera earlier. It wasn't a strong difference between the both of you at all. Yeah, I saw no reason not to dip Hera at that point. Like, there were still some things I had a question mark about where they were. Um, I can't quite remember if I had gone to check Desert Ledge for, and found Bo there yet or not um, when I made that. But yeah, honestly, like half magic would have been nice. I kind of really wish I found it because um, having only the Master Sword for the majority of that, no half magic, and I didn't have any potions after Mothia. <laughs> I was how happy in dire situations. How happy were you to find that tempered sword on the sixth floor? Uh, it was nice. I was kind of hoping we wouldn't, though, because uh, I'm pretty good at Master Sword Ganon. So I always hope that we end, like, the best case for me is that we end Master Sword Silverless, because I feel like I will probably outperform the majority of people doing that. Oh, that's um, understandable, but at least it made it feel a little uh, less nerve-wracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, okay. I still missed the one and one anyway. <laughs> um, but I got the triple Silvarius. So yeah, like, nice triple at the very end. Mothia 2 ended up giving you guys the how do you do by sending you down to the bottom floor once. And other than that, both of you guys had wonderful execution. You guys showed us some great kills. Check out for Amy's, uh Argus kill, for example. Oh, did you do the quick kill? Like the, the zero cycle strap? No, he didn't quite get it, but... Uh, the ending there with three fire rod flush sword spin was nice. Oh, that is nice. That's really good. But wait, we had silvers. Or did he not have the silvers yet? I think at that point he did not. Well, either way, no, it's, it's way more way, to do the fire rod oh, into a spin. He had so. the silvers, yeah. It was just the fire rod shots. Yeah, he he had to go spin. swag. Yeah, I don't mind taking a loss and doing game three for losing to swag points on this one. And you'll have to respect his uh, lovely little can of Samaria kick at the end there. That's true soccer fashion.
But GG to you. You're moving on to the round of eight. Who does he face in the round of eight there, B-Links? Chong 92. Your thoughts going into that match? Uh, I don't know I've ever played a single match against Kyung, actually. Like, I haven't raced recently in any big races, and I just don't know if our paths have ever crossed. So I really don't know much other than that they're a very good player. So it will be interesting. Is there anything that you're going to do to prepare for that? I'm going to try and not make any mistakes like I have in the last two matches. <laughs> uh, I just need to, I just need, I keep saying it, but I just need to, to play, get some hours in so that I'm more in form. But yeah, this was a bit better. I actually did a little bit of practice before uh, booting up the stream today with like Bomb Escape and some other things. But oh, yeah, yeah, just going to try and play well. I do want to ask about that. How happy were you to get the Fire Rod? Uh, but to be honest, I was like, wait, is this a, like, what's going on? Because we got the fire rod yesterday, and we got a gloves in Zelda's cell yesterday as well. I was like, this seems really weird. Um, but yeah, fire rod early is really nice. It's one of my favorite weapons. I was panicking a while because I didn't get any early bomb drops until like the rat room. And then when I saw it was in the left side, I was like, okay, I'm really glad I spent time farming for a bomb. 124 for Faramy, 125 for Crystal Soin. That's really low, just for me, like, generally speaking. That I'm is fast. extremely like, low, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's called a jet seed. Yeah, it's been my first one for a long time, so I'll take it. <laughs> well, good luck to you coming up in the round of eight. We'll see how that match goes next week for the two of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Yes, congratulations, Christos. We look forward to seeing what is in store for you next week. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, thanks again, and thanks for the commentary and to Restreamer. I'm assuming it's Nifboy? Uh, yeah, Nifboy, yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you later. See ya. That's Christos Owen as Faramy is answering questions in chat. If you have anything you want to ask in regards to how this seed went for them. GG to them and, uh, you know, making it to the round of 16 is definitely an honor. So don't take, uh, I guess the words I want to say is keep your head up high and GG to you and best of luck to you in the next tournament. Yeah, definitely being top 16 out of 512 players is huge. So good game to you, Fareem. All right, let's go ahead and wrap things up. we got a match that is currently in progress, Pink Kitty Rose, uh, taking on in game number three. Yep, uh, Zelga Desan versus Pink Kitty Bros. That is game three happening over an ALTTPR randomizer. Uh, that started about a half an hour ago. Andy versus Zero Rush coming up in a half an hour from now. Andy leads that best of uh, three series, one game to none. That is going to be over on Speed Gaming 3. Once again, that's currently in about 30 minutes from now. Yep, 30 minutes. So both of these uh, races coming up are hype races. So go on ahead and check those out. And we uh, are looking forward to the round of eight starting up next week. It's been a fantastic time, Rick. It definitely has. I've enjoyed doing this commentary with you. And also, once again, congratulations to uh, Christos and Gigi to Faramy. And thanks to Nip Boy who stepped up and helped us on tracking. Uh, coming up next on Speed Gaming 5, in about an hour from now, we have Gary and Old Wolf versus Sharky2107. That's in the Super Mario Brothers 3 Warpless Tournament. Uh, stay tuned for that coming up in about an hour. You know, we've only been here for an hour and a half. This is unbelievable. What, are, what am I supposed to do with the next hour? Go watch the other races. You know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Thanks for joining us. Have yourselves a good night. Good night.